Hi everyone, I'm Mary, and today we'll be looking at If the Emperor Had a Texas Speech Device, specifically episode pilot zero, yes, that's apparently the title, White Scars of the If the Emperor Had a Texas Speech Podcast. I have not seen it because it's the episode zero, and I'm guessing it's about the White Scars? The only thing I know about this going in is, one, it's Texas Speech, so I'm going to like it because it's going to be funny, and two, this is something all the different characters did in character. An entire podcast that they did in character. So it's canon. And that... Podcasts are known for every now and again putting out something that you don't expect. If that holds true, what are we getting into with, like, the Emperor off the cuff? More, more than usual, I mean. There is a link down below to the video. And just just hit it up, because it's, te it's Texas Beach. It's Bruva Alpha Busa. He's awesome. <laughs> Let's just get started, because, yeah, I want to watch this. Attention, denizens of the Imperial That's Palace and beyond. This Voxcast okay. Publique is designated oh, so it's not Alpha Priority. Voxcast Podcast. Continue oh, your operations, but listen well to this very important announcement. Thought for the day. Heresy has six letters. You are always six letters from damnation. It's a good line, but it's so blatantly evil. <clears throat> oh, God. Is it Tom? <laughs> the awkwardness of every podcast ever. Who's tapping the mock sailor? Uh, the, the on button shines green, so I would wager yes. Oh, my yes, God. Or... Sass me again, and I will throw you through the roof. <laughs> oh, look. There are ambience options on this thing. What What's are ambience? the options? Um, uh, rain and thunder... Wind in trees on an agri-world farm. Uh, Low-key high gothic chanting. That would be creepy. Crackling fire. Distant cyber mastiff barking. Empty cathedral white noise. Uh, real actual ocean <laughs> waves. Where sounds, do they get that? Uh, There's no water. Server farm humming. Artificial space noise. And, Wouldn't they just be quiet? Uh, Clown cavern ambience. Oh, definitely not that one. Activate. Why would that even? And see what it's. Oh God, like. no. Uh, right. I would hate uh, to be anyone who does this on a <laughs> headphones. Oh, oh. We have reached a pinnacle of relaxing ambient sounds. Father, this is distressing. What was the? It's I cannot just hear too many things to focus on. Thing. Please turn this horrible noise <laughs> off. I shall turn it down, my lords. Honestly, the the waves are nice, but now that we have set an appropriate mood, how about we begin? What? Yes. Is that actually something Sirs, they do in podcasts? Just random background wardens, noise? workers, and sycophants of the Imperial Palace. <laughs> Greetings to you. I am an Imperial Fist. You may call me by my newly designated wall name. What? Adorable. Do not do this. Together with me are two tribunes ah, of the Adventist Custodians. Because he did call well, him adorable centurion. salutations. Oh, he's adorable. Oh my god, it's actually pleasure. his name, isn't it? And your lord, <laughs> the emperor of mankind. <laughs> that is I. He has forced this menial servant boy into holding a vox heller into the sanctum imperialis in order to relay a message. Say hello, boy. What? Oh, okay, it wasn't who I thought. Hello. Thanks. You can stop breathing now. Yes, my lord. <gasps> oh my god! Do not actually do that. <laughs> yes, yeah, stop breathing. As it were, is that you all are absurdly uninformed? Yes. And that he is very ashamed of you. Yes. Secure your mouth, <laughs> you lemon-stained hunk of ceramite. I am not a large portion <laughs> and everyone's of Everyone's hearing going off on Robo. I am a living being. Sorry. This I Adorable. To notice. I did spill lemon juice on my centurion armor earlier this morning, however. Shut up. Where did you get I lemon am juice? speaking now. Greetings, children. Yeah, that's where I am. I am the emperor. How is it going? Just kidding. That was a rhetorical question. How many I people do just start talking actually to want to know. To bring you full context of exactly how so and why I, I can't speak. 
the golden throne to which I have been shackled for over 10 millennia has had a so-called text-to-speech device installed into its framework, allowing me to carefully manipulate the ancient microscopic remnants of my own flesh remaining around the stasis field encapsulating my eternal body, effectively typing out whatever I oh, want Oh, that is actually say. disturbing. This allows me to have nuanced conversations with you without the hassle of just breaking my soul in desperate attempts his to relay skin, my messages to the dim-witted populace of my Imperium through agonized flesh that had no skin on left. I have made the decision to broadcast this message to you, about that. for I have come to realize that you are all absurdly uninformed That's and nice that I am it. ashamed of you. <laughs> Rogel is right! Attunement, things have gone through seven hells of Sorry, adorable. and back. I'm gonna get it right. And just to give you an example of this... ...view, Vox Haler. Vox Yes, <laughs> They had fun with that kid. My is that an actual model? Lord. My lord, yes, my lord. What do you... What? what? No, no, sorry. Uh, me, 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 Tell me, me, in earnest, boy. Do you know anything about the white scars? Uh, what? Is, is, is that what you get when cutting your hands on on rusted knives? Funny. What is your? Not name? entirely wrong. My name? Uh, I, I, you took too uh, long. Your name is Boy. Now. Oh, 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 oh boy. This boy, boy, represents your collective ignorance. Is it secretly He's Loki? to the point where he does oh, not come on, I knew the that twist. one of the original Space Marine Legions. I mean, all right, to be fair, the White Scars are amongst the least noteworthy specimens I ever did Just make. Just because but they that always do no the worst out of all the different Most Space Marine variants. Most only enough education to enter the workforce. That's Knowledge why they need to get their primer back as a model. Constitute it's some badass. Information in that regard. Which is why I wish for this to be recorded and publicly spread to each household on each planet, no matter the time it may take. I really hope this is coming. I think it is, progress. but if I'm wrong, it would My suck. Children. I want this to be real. I shall provide context for why you are alive. This what? is ironic, coming from you, Father. Oh, yeah, I do skeleton. Not in the slightest. <laughs> so, <laughs> what we is are the best. right here, right now, is that we are covering the history of the White Scars because they are an important subject for the Imperium at large to know about, apparently. It is not about the importance of the subject matter. Then, what is it about? It is about quelling ignorance, however small it may be. <laughs> and because I just read it's several accounts worth of history of about the White Scars of all things, and I need a pick-me-up in the form of bias <gasps> Oh, oh right. even better! My beanie vocal cords are tense, taut, lubed, and loosened, my lord. Where Loosened exactly and taut are two different things. Oh, I don't even want to think about that. It depends on exactly how unknowledgeable we should assume our listeners currently are. Let us assume... Nope, nope. Very. Right. To clarify... Oh, God, I need a century model. I need to paint yellow, I need to get that head. Organs and Just need to do that. Just need to do that. Powered space armor. We are really assuming the worst. These space marines, along with all other fighting troops in our Imperium, are in a never-ending war against aliens and other undesirables in order to keep you, your neighbors, and your entire planetary population breathing. <laughs> they are a primary reason why you and your entire ancestral line even exists. Yeah, because this is the also ones why you kill work long on fulfilling days in fact forums, Extreme out in the fields, inside the mines, stuck in the district medicais, or wherever you may be doing your duty. Through your servitude, you are contributing to the fight. You are aiding in our continued existence. Except for the people, they kind of forgot the job doesn't exist, and obtain. they just had them do the meaning of work that means nothing. But we're ignore that. And that is why we are here specifically talking about the legendary and exceedingly rare Space Marine Strike Forces, only employed in the most dire situations, and not about, say, standard planetary defense forces that you, as a bog standard Imperial worker, might have actually seen once or twice. Well, to be fair, uh, compared to stories about their local planetary defense forces, telling stories about the fabled space marine chapters Definitely more would interesting. be loads upon loads more <laughs> exciting and... Uh, He's completely right, yeah. What is a better word for marketable? I can tell interesting. you, listeners, that I am such a space marine. The Emperor, yeah, a little more than that. my father, who is right over there in his throne, made 20 legions of space marines circa 10,000 years ago in the 30th millennium. Among them were the He's Imperial space Fists, like the such as I, actual strippers. as well as the White Scars. Take that however you want. are our subject matter. Well, to chip in, 
Each of these Space Marine Legions, or Legio Astartes as they were called in Which High Gothic, basically just Latin. were led by what you should probably know Pretty as sure. Primarch. You know, the Emperor's son. Like adorable over here. The reason you all celebrate Sanguinala? A Primarch is a Space Marine, but bigger. Tougher, they were designed stronger. to be my generals in the Great Crusade that I led while I still lived. Their existence being for the sole purpose of aiding me in my quest to unite mankind in a star-spanning empire and shepherd all into a new age. Unfortunately, fully half of my creations along with their Astartes legions turned against me under the oh. leadership of and one Magnus Primarch here, you, you should know as well. Oh goodness! Ah, my ears! Holy sh... <laughs> Are they the censoring the Emperor? It came from the Vox Herer, father. What in the absolute They actually censored the Emperor! Explain, <laughs> sir! I'm <laughs> sorry, my lord. The, the, the voice healer was designed to, to censor any words not sanctioned by the attorney. Oh! Well, that is a load of fucking shit. Why the f would they fucking do this to me? Someone needs to be fucking right the f now. How fucking dare they defend me? This is beautiful! Man, turn this fucking censor right off. Oh! What do you mean you can't? Uh, I'm sorry. You want me to suffer more than I already am? No, 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 never! Uh, Poor kid! Oh, I'm feeling you. Then turn those awful hell horns off, you fucking boy. Uh, there's, there's no option to turn off the sensors! Oh, I'm so, oh, I'm so, He's gonna pass out, isn't he? I'm so sorry, please. Goodness gracious! Oh, he just went everywhere. And his mouth you is covered, so it- Oh, it just went every- Oh. Perhaps you could use this as an exercise in not overusing profanity, father. Go f*** yourself, <laughs> Rogel. I believe that is biologically impossible. And I've well. only seen Laura do that with extensive genetic modification. Is there an option to censor everything Rogel says of her? I am adorable. <laughs> I love he's making it a system. So, uh, My lords, might I suggest we don't get too sidetracked? We have barely even started speaking of the White Scars. Who are they Most again? people in the Imperium have an attention span as large as the margin of error on a warp jump. If they do not listen, they will be sentenced to a vacation on the White Scars home planet. Is the margin Which of error higher or low? exactly the planet that we should be discussing how often today. they have errors or how often Having they shouldn't. Having introductions out of the way, from which side should we start prodding? We have read several yep. different accounts Strippers. of White Scars history. Most of it covering their actions between circa millennium 40,000 and now. What were the titles again? Let me check for you. Uh, you actually got the books see. too. Oh, right. Well, uh, we have uh, the five different Codex Space Marine. Oh, records. only five. Uh, so six, seven, and eight uh, are in this. Edition uh, oh. three through seven. What? Albeit I never did find edition one and two, so oh, that's... that was kind of odd. So eight's but, out. Uh, we oh, he says prior, prior to Gilman, so yeah, they wouldn't one. have it. Um, record, the, uh, the chapter approved book of the Astronomicon, and lastly, the hunt for Voldorius record. Which record should we begin covering? I love that they're Might actually I doing this. the Index Astartes book? It did contain a detailed record of the origins of the White Scars Primarch, Jagatai Khan, honored be his name. It, it was quite an interesting huh. read. Are if by interesting in? you mean sleep inducing, I might just agree. You do not sleep, father. You are in perpetual pain. It's almost as if you are an eternal pain glove cranked up to eleven. Thanks for reminding me of every second of my existence. You are welcome, father. Oh, I am surprised you <laughs> forgot. Ruggle. Permission. Fuck you. <laughs> loud noise. Permission to begin, my master. Go <laughs> right ahead. Index Astartes One. <laughs> right. That's so what the old one look like. The Index Astartes. Oh. Pick it up here. Sorry, the redactions the are just hilarious. Book starts recording the galvanizing history of the White Scars from page 40 and on. How many pages did they originally it get? Begins it begins by stating that the White Scars are only rarely recorded in history, and even when they are, the text is based on the words of the White Scars themselves, and thus embellished and exaggerated. The only way for them to make it interesting. I like how it brings up two examples of how Jagatai Khan... It also lets them completely name, lie in their printed canon lore. Planus. And how it's actually a nice little technique if you want to change it later on, but I don't want to say you lied. I think it's pronounced it's Mundus awesome when you do that as a Planus, actually. I think Mundus Planus sounds funnier. Mundus Phallus? Really? Plain. <laughs> yes. 
Empire's world. I want that to be a thing. He's from a planet that he traveled there from Terra by himself as a youth. Apparently. One cannot go in space travels when one is but an infant. Not well, safely. it is technically correct if you take into account that he did not travel voluntarily. The other example is uncannily correct, however. Oh yes, the other one says that he was abducted as a baby. Which he was, by the foul gods of chaos. Well, I guess that will make sense. He just froze up every Why am I even surprised? <laughs> The most amusing oh, God. part is that I think the right after redacts are probably my favorite part. It goes on to state that the truth is likely somewhere in between those two myths. Is this dumb record uh. implying that Jack Hotype, as an infant, mind you, wanted to get abducted so he could go crash into some feudal flatland and with Speedweed? Yes. Speedweed? Per Simple fact is that these men coincidentally <laughs> oh, keep saying one of the myths on point. <laughs> get enough remembrances high and throw them at an origin story, and someone will eventually get it right. <laughs> Permission to move on. So. <laughs> right, so uh, the record goes beautiful. on to tell us that the Khan arrived on a world within Segmentum Pacificus that is called... Segmentum Pacificus one. being the Imperial space to the galactic west of Terra, by the way. Yes, yes, oh. yes uh, the planet is called Mundus Planus. Mundus Planus. Will you shut up? Phallus Planus, there's really no bad way to say it. They're all terribly awesome. But to Jagatai Khan, I don't know be his name, it was known as Chogoris. Oh, that one I had heard before. It speaks to the banality of this place, that the Imperial Cartographers decided to name this planet, Plain World. Father, you must realize though, this name is bland. The world upon which humanity was first founded is called, and Dirt. I quote, Dirt. Earth, dirt, they are and actually the same thing. goes on to say how fertile the world is with Literally, lush Earth greenery, means dirt. soaring mountains, and azure seas. We are living on truly planet dirt. Truly a wonderland straight out of the old fables. Like I knew that, Not nearly I enough gold that. and huh. factorums. Yes, right, well. The planet of Chagoris was, well, as you said, my king, <laughs> classified as a feudal world, having just invented gunpowder. Uh, the majority oh. of its settlers living in an organized aristocracy under a ruler called Palatine. That is such a weird, unwieldy name. Good thing he died. Oh. Let me what? guess. Spoilers. You know, I'm going to take a wild guess here. Sworn Palatines rank amongst the sisters of battle. Really? Weird coincidence. Voxella, do you know what an organized aristocracy is? Uh, uh, uh food? No. Well, it is a form of government that is ruled by a small group of wealthy, uh, desperate you are, maybe. individuals. So, does that mean the Imperium is an organized aristocracy? Yeah, no. organized. It is an Imperium. Bigger and less organized. Sorry, I'm dumb. So, this Palatine apparently had highly disciplined and well equipped armies. Uh, well, it for had a few just ones. got gunpowder. Armored horsemen and infantry in high numbers won every campaign Palatine lost. I think they're missing so a P in that. They had effectively you know what conquered I mean. the entire planet, with the big exception of one area called the Empty Quarter. Ooh. Calling a big portion of land a quarter is a strange decision. Is it a quarter of the planet? Calling it empty when it is filled with savage tribesmen and horses is even stranger. I am certain many a family picnic ended horribly out there. So, here is where the Sounds story like landed on Westeros. Really? Or Westeros. We have not even begun, and I Fire am nice already world. sick and tired. Uh, apparently this book is now citing passages from another record called... Uh, the Great Khan of Quan Tso, penned by one of Jagatai's honored generals by the name of Okadai. That name sounds that familiar that? for some oh. reason, but more to the point, I was why did you it. not bring that record with you? Because we do not think it exists. We could not find it anywhere. So much for sources. Again, <laughs> so Jagatai Khan. If you want to lie, just have someone else lie for you and say they were wrong. The vast, wind blown steps of the empty quarter, west of Palatine's empire. As you said, uh, nomadic tribes of savage horsemen roamed these steppes and had done so for centuries, following a cycle of seasonal migration from pastures in the summer to protect so the mountains the Mongolian in the winter. Pattern. Like Always early Mongolian, like prior to Genghis Khan. How anyone can live with such a gold deficiency has always been beyond me. <laughs> gold and is we all know who Jagatai Khan is supposed to be. You say that like it is a fact. It is. No. 
What did you just say? While the Palpatine Empire Whoa, never what did I just conquering the empty quarter, nah. it's I no want to go back and rewatch that section, but uh, I'll do it later. These pretty tribes guy, constantly fought amongst themselves for territory. As <clears> if <throat> one field of grass is somehow better than another. They yeah, the one you have is never as good as the one you want to take next. Battle. Sticking axes in each other's faces is a great pastime. When riding horses stops being fun. Yes, uh, Watch your language. Uh, uh, but it was all child's play compared to the apparent atrocities carried out by the Palatine Empire. Let me guess, it had a lot of force like I'm psycho lightning. Based on the blood rituals the nobles of the Empire performed, oh. Imperial scholars believe they were worshippers of the Chaos Gods. Oh, oh, it happened to me now. Seems <laughs> even more grievance to Jack Hutt, I former to ring them. Right, so, uh, Jagatai landed near the so called Krunan River, where a man called Ong Khan found him. Honor goes to Don Khan for not trying to eat this crash landed infant upon finding him, I suppose. <laughs> his name is, his name is I do not think there have been any records of these tribesmen being cannibals, my lord. You are right. Honor goes to Jack Hatai for not eating this weird <laughs> horseman instead. <laughs> <laughs> no. The joke is that space marines eat human flesh at times. It is one of the funnier genetic quirks I came up with. That quirk has sure, to be recorded why not? in this index of studies. Memory, it's it's actually a thing, it's canon. To be specific. It's stupid, Source but it's canon. Great. He boy sure, always does it. Anyway, move on. Oh, right. So, Ong Khan was given the honor of adopting this glowing child into his tribe. Glowing? Uh, Talskar's believing him to be I didn't know he a glowed. gift from the gods. Of course he fucking did, damn it. Ow. Since he was young, he was a gift from the man emperor of mankind. There was a fire in his eyes, which is a Talskar term for being a great warrior. Having fire in one's eyes is not a Talskar term. It has been said for centuries. If Jagati had fire in his no, I mean, eyes, he would not be a great warrior. It's been said for so many centuries, warrior. it's just taken he from the old human dead. sense, so yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Psychic well, fire? Jagatai was still young, exactly how young we are not sure, but an event known as the Blooding happened. Raiders that doesn't from sound a rival good. tribe called the Kurayed stuck their axes into Talskar faces in a vicious, dishonorable ambush, <sighs> slaying his adopted father. Well, he did not stick around for a long. <laughs> I'm not going to dignify that. It was funny for you, but you GH my ears for food. <laughs> I am angry with the current state of events. <laughs> and the state of redaction. Already the greatest warriors amongst his tribe, and bearing many uh, uh, ritualistic scars of courage. Because having a ritual where you cut deep to scar yourself is a great idea when you live on a filthy feudal world where a simple yeah. infection equals death. Yes, uh, basically, he, he became popular amongst the Talskars and led them into battle against the Kurayed tribe. Racing their village to the ground and slaughtering them. I thought I said racing for a second. In their blood <laughs> like... and mounting the head of the Kurayad chieftain above his tent. These events were to shape the Primarch into the man he would become. A man of fierce honor, loyalty, and ruthlessness. As a disclaimer, just because Jack Hot Icon is a prime arc that you all should look up to does Don't. not mean that you should go slaughter your neighbors and raise their heads up high on your hand. <laughs> I have a feeling the next you episode will be a bunch of people doing uh, that. Yes, my lord. I will not savage the enemy tribe. Oh, he's getting over his list. Unless they are Xenos, of course. So anyway, uh, after the or killing mines. of the Kurayed, Jagatai swore to bring an end to the wars between also, the people the laughing of the behind mimes. I'm just going to you know, head cannon. To I'm not going to die. Purpose, and for his efforts, he was elected Khan of the Talskar tribe. After this, Jagatai started subjugating and conquering the other tribes, forcing them into his ever-growing army. Ah, he had his own little great crusade out in the fields, like father, like son, eh? We should call it the small crusade, for it was very small. What is he very leading good, to? Lord adorable. Please do not call him that. <laughs> anyway, More reason on, to uh, do it. The army he amassed <laughs> was named the Methuli, which is a Talskar word for irresistible It's actually force. pretty cool. He made military service mandatory and combined warriors from different tribes into the same units as to break up tribal association and rid his army of segregation. Wise. Could backfire, but sometimes works. Purely based on their abilities, giving each person due Ooh. respect if they could prove themselves worthy. Now that's impressive. As long as they were capable of growing a string you mustache, they were probably good. Yeah, so, uh, ten summers after the cooling of the Kurayet, 
While his armies were migrating in preparation for the coming bad winter, Let me guess bad a things. freak avalanche came blasting down the slopes, taking Jagatai and many of his tribesmen with it. Down. So who set off the avalanche? Oh, was come on. We all know Jagatai survived, of course. <laughs> no amount of snow could kill a Primarch. Yes, oh yes. Instead of dying, he was harried by a hunting band from the Palatine Empire, incidentally led by Palatine's own son. <sighs> Needless to say, he flipping died. Yeah. <laughs> Smashing. What was that yes. word you just said? Look, Smashing? I am desperate here. That disgusting Vox Haler is making me take drastic measures. Hilarious. Mm. Please, keep doing <laughs> this. For Q, your actions For... have consequences. Speaking of consequences... <laughs> they're annoying because he can't swear. And no, they're laughing because he can't swear. Slaughtered the son of Palatine and his band. Mutilated the last survivor. Ew. Tied him to his horse. Hung the decapitated head of Palatine's son around the neck of the survivor and sent him back to Palatine with a message. The people of the steppes are yours no longer. Nothing says get off my grass fields like being sent to your brat's head on Horse Express. Yeah, that would definitely get the, this, that would get the point across. Was outraged, and soon as summer the horse came, started for less. out with his army intent on wiping out the barbarian tribes. But they it did something incredibly stupid, didn't they? Jagati Khan, infinitely more cunning and resourceful than an old aristocratic cultist. Yep. In the Valley of the Khans, on the Long Sun Plain, Palatine's empire met Jagatai's Matuli. What was that? He met his defeat faster than Jagatai drives. <laughs> that is really fast. <laughs> really fast. <laughs> really fast. Fast. They're always saying fast. Since Palatine's army was accustomed to hand-to-hand -hand combat, no, they really. did not stand a chance against Jagatai's hit-and-run tactics. That is... Palatine instead wow. retreated back to his capital city and hid... They are idiots. Oh yeah, lady. cultists, never mind. This is really starting to sound familiar, eerily so. So over the course of the next years, Jagatai's army started overrunning Palatine's lands, besting armies, storming walled cities, and slaying its nobles. They had no choice but to either surrender or face total destruction. Apparently it was said that these devil-faced savages were supernatural or demons. Well, without the A here. Uh, kind of surprised demons wasn't redacted. They exact divine vengeance for the sins of man. I feel that thought process did a 180 with the whole demons exacting divine retribution thing. Considering they worship them, yeah. In the end, uh, Jagatai and his armies reached Palatine's oh, well, where were they of that? Pasta. Uh, Jagatai demanded Palatine's Wait, head. Did on they? they were on the city of Copy Pasta? No stone standing. That, that's Within an hour, a bad. group of weak nobles crawled out of the city's gates and gave Jagatai what he desired. After this pathetic defeat, the honored Khan's power. Wait, that was actually the end of it? Ocean to ocean, oh. The largest empire the planet had ever known. Conquered by a single man in less than 20 Dang. years. The small crusade was a great success. You're actually calling it that. <laughs> but even though he now ruled over oh, the vast more? area, Ooh. he knew that his people had no real desire to rule such a realm. Huh? His motivation was to reunite the tribes and exact vengeance on Palatine. Nothing more. Oh, Maybe I see what's going on. Maybe it wasn't as great a success as one might have thought then. Well, while ultimate power rested with the Khan and his generals, problem? they did not have any developed concept for ruling settlers. Oh, they're going to the uh, Alexander the Great they problem. simply wanted unity. That is about the time that I arrive. Good, as because it would have gone really bad otherwise. Is fractured. But this book claims that Tai made landfall and met Jack Hot Icon for the first time since his abduction. We met in his Zen little mountain palace called Quanzo, where he dropped to one knee in front of me cool. and swore eternal fealty to Not the Imperium awesome. of Man. In response, Jack Hot I left the planet and its rulership to his successor Ogudai, while I gave him the Fifth Legion, which he renamed the White Scars. Actually, speaking of that, what yeah. were they called before they reunited? Ooh, actually, I'm curious about that too. I do not remember. Ah, yes, but you know, 
ignoring that. Wish we knew that. Sounds like reuniting with you, my I'm emperor. Change anything, but he, it's kind of, of fun. course, continued to use the lightning fast tactics that he had made use of upon. Hey, he didn't run as effective. Used them to great the reason why I'm annoyed. The, the scars are not end. actually good. And then, seventy years after the Horus Heresy, while Chagoris was still a semi-feudal world, still under the control of his tribes, Jagati disappeared. His disappearance happened somewhere near the Maelstrom. While he was chasing a dark Eldar cabal that had taken many of his fellow tribesmen hostage. It does say here, though, that that is not set in stone. It is more I mean, likely that the Khan's uh, ship was simply lost in the war. Just to make sure you know they're lying, through they have it, to spell it out. As that does tend to happen a lot. I would never believe the Khan would face such an anticlimactic end. Technically, in no. lore, you did, so we're going to ignore the that. Webway. I have no doubt about this. What do you base this on? Staunch intuition, and my knowledge of who the Khan is. I agree. And because Jack Games Workshop Hunt wants to make money way. off a figure. I can feel it. <laughs> no objections here. But, anyway, let us cap the Index Astartes record off with what has happened since then. Which is what you are more interested in, I am certain. The origin story of Jack Hotai does set a good standard for what his legion would become. A ragtag bunch of straggly mustached motorbike lovers who like pushing their throbbing power bikes into heads deprived of bodies. Would not want them any other way. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow, he so, was getting off on that. An interesting tidbit is that Jagatai I forgot he's the creepy one. one. So, uh, became their fortress monastery. It is said to be a thing of savage beauty. I wonder if there's art of it. Walls containing both running rivers and forests full of wild animals which the Khans hunt for sport. It is the opposite of a savage. It is a magical wooded wonderland. This palace lies in the Kung Pao Mountains. It's spreading the magic the kingdom of Disney, that isn't it? The stars. Which is to say that it is located in the most inaccessible mountaintop on the planet. But you can fly, so why is that? Sounds hard? like he made it intentionally inconvenient just so you could get more scratches and infections on the way up. Otherwise, uh, there's also mention of their combat doctrine, of course, which is the classic lightning fast hit and run tactics with highly mobile forces and ultra rapid deployments. Wow! Everything's ultra light and fast hit and run. Whoa! Fast! Stop having a speed stroke and <laughs> what continue was one. that? Well, they work best against heavily armed opponents, and uh, oh, while they do prefer to keep their enemies at an arm's length, they are fully capable of launching bloody assaults with both melee bikers and assault squads. I do wonder how often they just go for the conventional tactic oh? of running their enemies over. They do not. Seriously? And I am unsure why. During the second Gameplay fight, mechanic, sure, but even in the lower, really? followed Rubuti Gilliman and split the Khan's legions into several chapters. The White Scars chapter was organized with loyalty to the Codex Astartes, but had some rather noticeable organizational differences. Oh! Such Ooh, as higher that. proportions of bike squads, <laughs> land speeders, and no devastator squads. What? I guess going oh. fast is its own suppressive yeah, fire. Yeah, devastators uh, would be slow. Oh, and no dreadnoughts. To the White Scars, the dreadnought is a terrible I would agree with them, honestly, but uh, weird. That goes against their philosophy that when a warrior dies, his soul should be free to go Although to the technically they're not life. dead. The Dreadnought is only a temporary state. This just sounds like a giant excuse. They know that if someone is put in a Dreadnought, they will never go fast again. Unless they hook up rockets? As for their belief, a rocket Dreadnought. Scars, oh, that sounds the awesome. Khan's vision of mankind united. <laughs> oh, they would never also do it. It'd be too OP. The Emperor, I want them to do it. My lord, as the ultimate uniter, it's a Gundam at that point. Oh, actually, it would be a Gundam. If we are to get metaphorical, I am more of a grandfather to them, I would say. I would say Grandpa Emperor does not quite have the same clang. Yes, uh, but they also believe that one day the Emperor will uh, once again rise from the Goblin Throne and begin his goblin? next crusade no, to unify the galaxy once more. <laughs> did you say Goblin Oh, I'm not the only one who got that. No, you definitely said Goblin Throne. Oh, I didn't hear it right. <laughs> no, shut up! <laughs> it's a tiny annoying no, thing that he can't notice. do anything about. Barring belief in the Goblin Throne, this is what you should believe. Uh, anyway, <laughs> the ones who teach the theological throne. are the so-called Storm Seers. I think he actually just made a mistake of they're calling him on in character. Incidentally, <laughs> it says the Storm Seers are also the ones who recruit new initiates into oh. the White Scars on Chogoris. 
That's Seems like the chaplaincy has been completely wrapped into the librarius amongst the white scars. That actually Stop sounds kind of awesome. Things I do not like. It is because stormseers were shamans in their old tribes. Oh. They are priest and magician in one. That is like mixing chewy mints, soda pop, and shrapnel. <gasps> it will result in an explosion, and many will be there to get a lethal face full of the result. <gasps> oh god, it someone actually probably did it after listening to this. Strength and unity, of course. While the Stormseer choose different initiates from wholly different warring tribes on the steppe, they force them to work together and become one under the Khan. Apparently, this does not mean that it is unheard of for tribal feuds to happen between squad members, but uh, not everyone can have as clear a mind as the Khan himself, of course. I would now like to address the fact that the book talks about the Gene Seed, which is my area of expertise. Considering my it's just going to be all redacted, isn't it? I did it? not make any inherent flaws in the original Gene Seed, so the supposed savagery that is inherent to the Gene Seed of the White Scars is either entirely placebo, or they somehow fudged it up like the space. I kind of like this with placebo effect, fixation. actually. Did you just use the word fudge as a profanity? Yep. Is your mouth Rogel? I am adorable, <laughs> and I like fudge. Again, Rogel's awesome. Near you? Right, so uh, I feel like we have the, <laughs> right the goblin throne. the way now. <laughs> yes, we should really move on to greener pastures. And drive over them! Do not make jokes. You were not made for it. <laughs> no, I was made to protect the goblin throne. Yes! Stop! <laughs> <laughs> so, since we got I'm the gonna start calling it that now. I have to. I suppose we should review the other books with this one in mind. Compare and contrast, if you... Oh my god! Yes. <laughs> Let us start with these codexes. Codex Space Marines Whoa, like Third Dark Edition. Is that Marius Kaga? Third Codex goes fast. So, this one has a uh, severe lack of information, but it has some. So, uh, uh, first of all, uh, the Rampagers are mentioned, who are a second founding successor chapter. Oh, Scots. so they were back there in These third edition. Also too. Mentioned in the I got in on eighth, so I'm missing most of the early war. The Destroyers and the Storm Lords. One of these is not like the others. When the most creative name you can come up with for your successor chapters is the Storm Lords, it speaks of a lack of imagination. Oh, they just want to get to the end the fast, right? The Rampagers have this long ceremony called the Blooding. That is the exact same name they used for when Jack Hotai overkilled that cowardly enemy tribe, as mentioned back in the Index book. Yep. Oh, yes. You cannot just use the same dumb name for something twice like this. Dusk Raiders are multiple this places for completely different things. The Marines in the chapters scarring themselves. Hold the flop on. Scars do no courage amongst the white scars, as inspired by that doll scar clan, right? Well, yes. It says facial scars are a matter of rank and prestige amongst the Rampagers and, well, amongst the white scars too. That essentially <coughs> means the Rampagers are cheating. They scar themselves without having earned said scars. They Ooh. just sit back and cut themselves for hours when they could be out getting oh out. Oh god, they're fast moving emo band. By fighting and being useful. Well, a fast moving I band of emo bikers. To do with the blood they <laughs> from their open wounds. What do they do with it? They, uh, oh, no. they use it for their feast that follows. But what? Disgusting. Consider them to be on my do not meet directly list when I get off of this throne. It reminds me of my family dinner. Whoa! Um, yeah, that is really it for this codex. It also Did the little boy just freak out one of the stripper Cody's? Strip Stodies? The successor chapters in a diagram. Okay. The twenty original Space Marine legions, and that is about it. Next book, then. All right, on to the fourth codex. Space Marines, 4th edition. Okay, I'm pretty sure that's Marnius Calgar. Can you hear that crackling? Yeah. Right. So, here we first of all have the exact same 20 original legions diagram I just mentioned when covering the third codex to start off. Yep. It is exactly the same, barring some changes in the spellings. Secondly, we have another diagram over the Codex Compliant and Codex Divergent chapters. Oh? The advantages and drawbacks of each. Well, that's actually a cool little Should effect. be interesting. No, probably not. Uh, the White Scars are said to be a courageous Codex Compliant chapter and have traits known as Be Swift as the Wind, 
and trust your battle brothers, while their drawback is flesh over steel. Huh? So they are really fast. They have trust in each other, but they do not like wearing helmets. Exactly why was this written down? I can see all that by just looking at a picture of them. Uh, that is almost it. It's uh, a cool effect. I like, can see why they got rid of it in later drawback ones. Drawback has in actuality to do with their lack of facilities to huh? deploy a lot of vehicles, like predators and land raiders. I am fairly certain a chapter does not need their own facilities in order to get a hold of some tanks when you have Forge Worlds in almost every system. Perhaps oh, they prefer many, wow. not to use those vehicles because they are too slow? That makes more sense. I would assume the White's cars to be dumb enough to not take tanks rather than the Mechanicum well, being really dumb enough tank. not to give them any. Uh, Again, that would just be a gun at that point. some mention of a White Scars Marine named uh, Subodai. Deja vu again. Who was on a pilgrimage to kill orcs and died, but uh, honestly, it is entirely irrelevant, and we should move on. Oh? Let us do that then. Codex Space Marines, 5th edition. Is that a face on the back the of the fifth guy's codex, then. back? This one. Just gonna ignore that one. Contains a lot more stuff. Or, well, it does start off with the exact same diagram that the 3rd and 4th did. Uh, telling us who their successors are and the names of the 20 original legions and that the White Scars planet is in Mundus Planet. Mundus Planet! Bad joke! Stop it! <laughs> Just like this I still prefer Phallus. <laughs> well, now this one says that the White Scars are adherents to the hit and run attack. And masters of I realize what I just said. Never heard them use the word reconnaissance to describe the white scars before, but I suppose they would be good at surveying enemies and regions before making their attack. Mm, I am surprised have to they can reconnoiter anything successfully. considering they never slow down. Would not everything just be abler? Oh, 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 here is a second use of the word ultra rapid deployment. Fancy. Why would anyone use that word more than one time? Lightning fast deployment would work better for the white scars. Ultra rapid sounds a bit too. Well, blue? you know. <laughs> Move on before we start because he's just another blue with envy. discussion. I am sick of those. Right. Uh, well, here is something crazy. Uh, it says that since space marine tanks are too slow for the white scars, their artificers have become adept at modifying the motive units of predator, vindicators, and even land raiders Ooh. to ensure that white scars, bikers, and recon elements always have proper fire support. As the great Khan once taught, speed is worthless if the blow it delivers is robbed Wait, of its strength. Goodness, That's actually good. gracious. <laughs> this contradicts <laughs> everything we have heard about the Weiss Cars vehicle pool thus far. First of all, I was under the impression they did not have a whole lot of tanks in the first place. Maybe they couldn't make well, it work. Sir, they still do have tanks, but fewer than other chapters. Perhaps the ones they do have, they make really fluging fast. That is so cool. To your face. <laughs> and my nipples would get cold. You cannot <laughs> make tanks fast. Tanks do not eat food in the first place. Okay. What? Now you are just really reaching. If the Mechanicum wanted them to go as fast as the Weiss cars are making them, they probably would have already. Hello. Yes. Well. A big part of the Mechanicus are fairly conservative yeah. about tinkering That's the technology of the year. in such a manner. I was going 10, to say, years. if these White's Cars artificers managed to make a straight-up improvement to those three different tanks, why would they not send these schematics to the rest of the Empyrean to use as well? But now I see it might just be the Mechanicum being bags of tremendously stubborn rubbish. If we assume the White Scars didn't just make them lighter and faster they by them red? significant parts of their hull off of them, hey, it might actually the work too. The were probably lost in some backlog. Yay, bureaucracy. Moving on, it says here that the White Scars' favorite opponent to fight oh? are the Orc Cults of Speed, or the Saimhan Wild Riders. I can only guess why. They can go they into a race off. Murder racing. Of course they do. <laughs> Ultra rapid murder racing. <laughs> I would not be surprised if they carry out rituals in which they send out their weekend crippled on a bike to ride down a cliff to an ultra rapid demise. Otherwise, they are. Do they pull out and survive and then get to get them back? Scars of paint, uh, tribal markings to emulate the tribesmen of the steppe. Oh, and uh, it also says here that they call normal space marine helmets uh, biker. Helmets. Everyone else calls that a avoid getting shot in the head, you dumb idiot. 
helmet. To be fair, so I mean they take much them off every single chapter, regiment, division, and ordo in the Imperium and beyond have soldiers refusing to wear helmets for reasons we have yet to figure out. Looking at you, adorable. Yeah. I will not grant you the honor of a measured response because while you do wear a helmet, but nothing your else. skin to armor ratio is 90 to 10. Well, hey, we have just about the most eventless job in the galaxy. Making the rounds in the palace is a lot easier when wearing naught but leather and proverbial body gloss. <laughs> you are insane and need psycho indoctrination and perhaps several weeks in the pain glove. Oh. Here we have our first mention of the hunt for Valdorius. He's just oh excited boy. to get on with it, isn't he? The hunt for Valdo <laughs> <It> does. Oh, <laughs> we'll get back to that when we cover the record in End of Itself. Goodness, that Valdorius pronunciation. Sounded like you were about to puke, my master. This text-to-speech device is awful sometimes, but it fits considering <laughs> the subject matter. <laughs> right. So he puke? that leads us to the first ever independent marine recorded in these books. That is... Not Jagger Khan, honored be his name. The Honorable Corsaro Khan. Oh, yes. He was the one hunting in the hunt for Valdo. Oh. He does. I suppose he deserves his own page for killing the most pathetic demon prince I have ever had the pleasure of hearing about. Corsaro oh, Khan geez. is the 51st individual master of the hunt, which is a honorific that has been passed down since Jagger Khan presumably made it up. Being entirely unique. Not really sure why it's. Scars. So I oh, suppose the unique. rampages, marauders, yeah. destroyers, and stormlords. Oh, they definitely do, do, right? Have it as it in the end is all in all a waste of a rank. This is true. His duty is above all to seek out the chapter's adversaries that have somehow battled them and survived. They, they wouldn't know. Consider those enemies to be a scar, if you will. I thought they honor, like scars. And they cannot be allowed the glory in this small victory. As if there is any to be had in the first place. So, every 25 years, the White Scars hold the rites of howling, in which the master of the hunt is dispatched to seek out and, of course, bring back the head of one How they work for a demon? Don't they dissolve? This fascination with heads is disturbing. To be fair, the Imperium is littered with skulls already, is it not? Yeah. Those have at least been cleaned and bleached. They just take the head with all the flesh and fibers included. Yeah. Quos? Quos? <laughs> so, Corsaro Khan, being the honored master of the hunt, is sent out on one of these operations and is not <clears throat> allowed to return before his prey. Well, that seems like a giant waste of important individuals. That returns with their head as proof of the kill, and the White Scars celebrate with a moonlit feast. After that, he gives the head over to the head chaplain, who- Wait, 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 excuse me. Head chaplain? So they do still have a chaplaincy then? It is not wrapped up into the librarius? Talk about redundant. Uh, I suppose the White Scars just need a lot of encouragement from many different sides or something. Wait, no, I just realized. What? You said head chaplain, right? Oh, goodness, he did. Oh. oh. What? Is verbatim. A head chaplain. A chaplain dedicated to the collection of heads. <laughs> At least they serve a purpose other than being a so-called spiritual <laughs> advisor. Do they worship Why the speed force? Why do you lean in on the halo so much? Because I need to emphasize how terrible the decision is. <laughs> well, very well. So, what the head chaplain does is that he the takes names. up a heated brand and burns the ice out from the dead skull while the hymn of vengeance is sung. Afterwards, they eat the ham of vengeance. Do they hold a grudge against this ham for smelling bad? Why, Why would ham smell they bad? Not just throw the head into an acid bath to cleanse it of all the flesh? Why do they have to make it so unhygienic? What if he brings back a head, end with it? Some awful alien virus that spreads across the planet Probably and happened. kills its people. They still live on a feudal world. Nurgle Besides is a thing. Besides famine, childbirth, and moving, disease is the greatest threat. The head chaplaincy needs to think this through. Well, after that is done, uh, the head chaplain masks the head in silver and mounts it on a lance along the path leading up to the fortress monastery, alongside thousands of other heads whose owners have met So a lot of people beat defense. them and escaped. Would be a nice place to take your partner. Oh, right. Now we will go over... <laughs> what is... The sixth is he just reading all this? Which contains more information than the last ones. For better or... For 
not better. No. Codex Space Ooh, Marines. Cool art. I think it's Sixth four. edition. Is the diagram is still there? Is or just a Yes, it is still the same. It lists the twenty original legions, their successors, and Manus planet. Thalus. Their home planet. All is the same. Good. I would have almost been disappointed if it was not a. So here it mostly tells us of things we already know. Hunters with Alpia, the savage visages feared throughout the galaxy, and oh boy, they use ultra rapid deployment to ensure that the first first sight of them is the last. Got the rule of three, gentlemen. Ooh. Now yeah. we will remember it forever. Yes, I am so happy this has happened. I need to paint them blue now. So uh, just anyway, paint them blue for that uh, one joke. Here we have joke. mention of Mandus Plan and Chagoris <laughs> being one and the same. Which is the first oh, clarification geez. of this we have had in any of these codexes. Wait, they hadn't clarified before? Then goes on before? to describe the White Scars as fierce, honor-scarred warriors. I thought the scars denoted courage, not honor. And that scars that on their honor difference? were a bad thing. Big enough to bother me. I believe they encourage honor and honor courage. They can do both of those things without cutting ordish. themselves in the face with a knife. It then explains that the White Scars have a controlled savagery, with emphasis on control. They have a thirst for war in their blood, but it is always tempered by a sense of honor and justice. Savage, but controlled by a moral compass. Like space wolves, but with discipline, <laughs> and a fixation with fast instead of wolves. You be the space pug? Sorry, space corgis? perfected his favorite it's weird they keep saying RB his name, but they don't do that for anyone else. ...on Chagoris with his nomadic cavalry warriors, which is both parts strange and impressive considering they only had horses. Perhaps the horses of Chagoris have 16 legs or something. Perhaps the horses of Chagoris ate the speed weed. <laughs> it then, of course, mentions sure, that the why not? was present during the siege enhanced horses. of the Imperial Palace, but also that they were at the forefront of the great scouring after the Horus Heresy, chasing the traitor legions into the Eye of Terror, where they preside to this day. I wonder if the White Scars persist in their hit and run tactics even with their space vessels. Ooh. I wonder if their artificers have made their spaceships go faster. I would not be surprised. Ooh. Next up, yeah, she sounds cool. I, did, I, don't know. Founding, I didn't even think of that. The White Scars embraced the Codex Astartes, of course, and have ever since adhered to it, but alongside it have always maintained the long ingrained traditions of their own culture, such as apparently calling their companies brotherhoods, referring to their company captains as Khans, and calling their chapter master the Great Khan, as was mentioned <laughs> in that index status book. Do not forget how they call their librarian Storm Sears, how they put chaplains on full time head. To be fair, how they Storm sounds a lot tanks, cooler. Dreadnoughts, or terminators, and how they use excessive so amounts silly. of bike squadrons and land speeders instead. Yeah. The only thing they are not doing is legion building, huh? which is less a guideline in the Codex Astartes and more a galactical legislation. So, being Codex compliant basically Size. pertains to not legion building according to this record. Whatever else the Codex Astartes says is just guidelines and dump fluff. I realize I have been scammed. I only had to accept the no legion building proposal. I never had to review his book. I am now angry. Wait, he actually left a review. Oh yeah, he did leave a review. Criticism against him and his book. <laughs> Two stars returns. or three stars. I now feel fully justified <laughs> in my last wall protocol. What? Uh. Anyway, between the different brotherhoods of the White Scars, uh, there exists a strong sense of rivalry. Really. The cons of the different brotherhoods often end up competing in tests. So he literally created because he accepted the chapter the situation he ran so into a giant before he united them. Who gets to die first? <sighs> Good. That is the best kind of rivalry. Oh look, they called regular Astartes pattern helmets biker helmets again. How many different patterns the are there? Say anything about oh, do they have like little pointy, pointy nose helmets, helmets still? I've seen because a few of those. I feel it needs a section for that specifically dedicated to the white scars. Really think they would even see that? Good point. They have probably never even read it. <laughs> and now for something completely different. We got some information on Quan So, the White Scars Fortress Ooh. Monastery, aka their headquarters for 
those of you who do not know what a fortress monastery is. Really cool looking. It is a city-sized fortress with great adamantium Ooh. gates, feasting halls with marbled walls, heavily hung with many a trophy taken by yeah. the white scars. Probably the bypass. fortress has massive void shields to prevent aerial bombardments, nice. and is armed to repel attacks from land, air, and space. For offensive purposes, it has enough ordnance to flatten an entire hive city. Dang. As well as a massive macro laser known as Khan's Spion. Macro laser? Their librarius is a lightning racked spire where stormseers study lore and chronicle deeds and events, as well as proceeding over the chapter's astropaths. Oh. So they can communicate with the Imperium Makes at large, sense. as well as the White Scars. Yeah, and they keep all the psychers in one place, so you know where to they shoot if something goes wrong. They forgot to mention the big old fortress forest. I wonder how much of it is fortress and how much of it is forest. Moving on. Each brotherhood, of course, has lots of bikes and land speeders. If you get the Doctor Who reference, good on you. Infantry squads are apparently almost always born to battle by fast vehicles or gunships. Mm -mm. Gunships have not been mentioned in their roster before, but it does make a lot of yeah, sense. Yeah, they're fast. Aircraft does go fast. Oh, interesting. It says here that the few white scars dreadnoughts actually do exist. Ooh. Good or bad, depending on the situation. Only in the direst of circumstances do they enter service as, to the white scars, spending an eternity sealed within a dreadnought to, and I quote, never again feeling the rush of air whilst hurtling towards the foe with a blade in hand. Also known as to never go fast again. Yes, a truly horrifying... Seriously, ghost. rockets! Does this Your mean each metal significantly mech, wounded marine that does not want to get put in a box gets taken behind a shed? Maybe they have a retirement monastery in their fortress forest where they get pumped with artificial speed. I believe they call it the Emperor's Pace. The joke no. is that you replaced peace with pace, and that giving someone the Emperor's peace is the act of euthanizing dying marines, while pace is a synonym for speed. Thanks for explaining my joke to the people in the back. Right. So they do have dreadnoughts. <laughs> okay. But they never the joke wasn't them, funny. As you can Him getting annoyed that he explained it was. Mark, you can only hit. Hit and waddle more like. <laughs> as it said, my lord, only in the direst of circumstances does it happen. Why do they not just make land speeder dreadnoughts? Or give them treads? Still no artificers or facilities on what was the planet, that? sir. Replacing what, what, their why was that thing on the screen? Not what, be what? That hard. what? Treads are not fast enough. That would be dreadful. I will <laughs> come you for that. <laughs> Moving on, uh, here it says that while the White Scars are I'm savage, make a pun about that. Oh, wow. highly intelligent tacticians and masters of fieldcraft. Each brother draws on their savagery, but not to the point of being a berserker, like an orc or a cornet or a, a space wolf, but instead as space a corgi. Uh, quote unquote finely crafted hunting spear delivered with focused precision of a master predator. Being a finely crafted hunting spear does not translate to being a highly intelligent tactician, nor a master of fieldcraft. It means you are a spear. That is well made. Spears are not even that savage. Cutting off a head with a spear would not be worth the effort. What they do do, however, is plan out their strategy in depth and formulate plans and contingencies before their strike. Sounds almost like an as ultramarine. Damage as I went there. So. They ask themselves, how fast can we potentially go, while still seeing our targets decapitated? <laughs> yes, that is pretty much it. And now we come to this massive White Scars timeline, recording a lot of what I assume to be major events that have happened since, uh, well, not that long ago, really. Wait, really? It begins in 742 oh, oh, yeah, millennium 300 40, years, but still, close to almost everything else. The White Scars were assigned to the Crusade in Damocles Gulf as to lead a ground assault against the Tau invaders on the <laughs> world Tau invading? <laughs> so did they win? Yes. Uh, Wait, what? It does not say. What a useless timeline. Wait, but I suppose Tau it was can good win? to know how they have been deployed in the past. What is next? Huh. Uh, in 755 Millennium 41, they were assigned Weird. to the Sabbat's World Crusade. 
in which the White Scars, along with the Iron Snakes chapter, joined other indistinct Imperial armies to fight a long campaign against the forces of chaos. Oh, good. Damn it. <laughs> okay, we need to come up with a good word for that in order to bypass these revolting <gasps> censors. Oh. Uh, Koas. I replaced the A with the O. I mean, it works, Koas but... is good. So, they have fought yeah, forces they're going of some kind of funny Koas. Very good. What next? What's a Choaz? Do not worry about it. Uh, the Lycanthos Drift campaign. <laughs> and because it got around the censor, it's actually going to backfire. In the aftermath of something called the Fourth Quadrant Rebellion. So the White Scars came <laughs> to aid a desperate call to arms to defeat the invading forces of Kaer. Koas. Koas. Right. So far, they have mostly just fought together with other units. It is good to know they can coordinate with other Imperial forces, but I am not yet convinced of them being capable of working on their lonesome. Well, in uh, 813 Millennium 41, the White Scar's third company, I assume they mean Brotherhood, uh, were ambushed on the world of Canovar by legions of Necrons. How do Necrons ambush you? They don't move that fast. Sandrek and Varagod Oberon, who I assume are Necron overlords. Over 50 battle brothers were slain and Corsaro Khan was taken. They take captives? Did you say 17 Khans? No, I, I said Corsaro Khan. I assumed they kept getting in unfortunate bike accidents. How did you even get that wrong? <laughs> well, that just made me all the more doubtful of them working as their own force without being babysat by guardsmen or something. However, Corsaro Khan managed needs to, babysit to break you. out of the Necron prison. The idea of a Necron prison existing is funny to me. Yeah. Do we have a reason why, why we would they have them? in the first place? Uh, no. As father would say, what an assortment of male genitalia. What a surprise. <laughs> the boy can learn. He, he. Uh, as in Corsaro Khan, then returned to Chugoris and had the names of his Necron captors added to the Scroll of Vengeance, which I assume is their hunt list. Considering their naming conventions, the Scroll of Vengeance could just as well be their cookbook. The recipes are exclusively fast foods. Was that a joke just now? No. Oh. And yes. So it's true, but funny because it's true. Nevertheless, that they have their own That's little bit of grudges oh is also funny to me. In 858 Millennium 41, the Diata Purge happened. Oh, that's how you in say which it. which Chapter Master Kublai Khan, or Great Khan Kublai, led the combined Kubla forces Khan? of the White Scars and the Marauders chapter Not touching that one. of uh, Koas Marines. Okay. Kublai, why is every single name popping up in these books reminding me of something horribly uncanny that I cannot entirely remember? In 861 Millennium 41, the hunt for Valdorius begins. Finally. At the centennial feast in celebration of Kublai Khan's ascension to Great Connery, Corsaro Khan is ordered to hunt down the demon Connery? prince Kernax Voldorius really? <laughs> and return with the monster's head. Was there a Lord Sean Connery? This we will return to. That they it did not me, okay. I, 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 I broke trip coffee. down a staircase and died by the time of this feast is beyond me, considering how laughable his mere existence is. Next, 865 <laughs> Millennium 41, the purging of Modana happened. In which mm. Corsaro first found Voldorius. Yeah, coffee. Modana being his former stronghold. However, he only got within arm's length of him before he apparently ran away or something. The most How? pathetic excuse for a demon prince. You will learn just why soon enough, listeners. Do not <laughs> yes. worry. In 869 so. Millennium 41, sure. the White Scars fought a host of Eldar Windriders from Craftworld Imalok and all but annihilated them with their bike and land speeder squadrons. Excellent. At last they proved themselves against but... Eldar, specifically, which is impressive in its own way. The Eldar must be extra hard to hit when going fast, considering your standard Eldar is small and spindly, not that big of a hitbox. Now... In 871 Millennium 41, the liberation of Quindus happened, which we will get back to when we actually cover the hunt for Voldorius. They're going to do that in a separate video, like aren't they? To do already. How about you give yourself a break and skip on ahead to when something of actual interest happens <laughs> in this timeline? Oh, thank you, my master. I was about to die. Right, so 
One thing here in 890 Millennium 41 is that a Necron tomb ship entered Ooh. the orbit of Chagoris and started firing upon the planet. Why? The battle barge Jagatine's Pride pierced the ship's shields as Quan So fired its macro lasers, destroying the tomb Damn. entirely. That's an that impressive macro That was the least interesting thing you could have brought up. Sorry, my master, but I was about to say, uh, the interesting thing about this event is that the tomb ship itself Empty? started firing on a specific area that was entirely unpopulated. Oh, that... that does not bode well. No, it doesn't. Does this imply that that Chagoris could possibly be a tomb world? That is the opposite of good. Considering and that the Necrons were firing on the ones that hadn't woken up yet. Time, a warning might be in order. Yes. Next interesting event would be in 943 Millennium that 41. One... In Dynasty B. Dark Elder once more Iffy Necrons wanted to kill him before they even woke up. History practically repeating itself. They preyed on the civilians of the planet, taking them and bringing them off world. In response, Great Khan Kublai immediately runs after the attackers, but mysteriously vanishes soon after. Really? Presumed dead. Soon that? after, oh, one history repeating itself. Yeah, I see it. Is made Great Khan. Chubal, do you know that one actually sounds unique? What we learn here, however, is that you should never ever chase after the Dark Eldar into their horrible little dungeon realm. Now, in 945 Millennium 41, Corsair Khan returns to Chugoris once again with not only the head of the leader of the Cabal of the Bloody Talon, but those of 1,000 Dark Eldar warriors. More impressive Suffice if you keep those say, heads safe for that long. Chubli it's so fragile. Considering Corsaro seems to be the only marine worth more than four mentions in any <laughs> book we have covered, why is he not Chatter Master? Because he is master of the hunt. So he cannot get a promotion that? because of it. Actually makes sense that he keeps sending him off. Of Corsaro Khan being very reckless and brash to the point of insubordination. That might be a good reason to not And I can do then it. this way make him useful by sending him the off to do things to on his own. In the timeline is the third war Actually, for not a bad idea. Which is a great war against the forces of Orc Warlord Garskul Thraga. During this oh, he doesn't know about Garskul, does he? operations in the Deadlands region of Armageddon is so successful that they outflank and destroy the Orc Speed Freaks Brigade without taking a single casualty. Wow. Big points to them for that. But Not taking a single casualty when performing a Nay War that is essentially a giant chicken race is impressive. Did you just acknowledge someone's accomplishments? Yep. Yes. And no. <sighs> Other than that, we and had better no? move on now. Codex. Oh, because it was Space a group, Marines, not an individual. Seventh edition. Kind of. Kind of? Okay, I I'm going to say it right now. The Seventh Codex is barely worth covering. Damn. As there is nothing new that we have not already covered. With the exception of some information on how they paint their armor. It's really like painting that actually helps. Chugorian, they say Chogorisian. But does it have the diagram? Yes. My perfectionism <laughs> is now satiated. <laughs> so, now we are moving on to the book of the Astronomicon. It... Uh, it does not have too much information, but... but... It is interesting, to say the least. Let us hear it. The Book Whoa. of the Astronomicon. Well, the thing that sticks different. out is that the white scars are spelled white scars here. Like, there is no space between the white oh, and God, the Oh, God, that would, that would, that would bug me. That would bug me. English word. major issue there. Was there a space to begin with? Well, well, yes. There's always been a space between the two words. I think I remember there not being one. Then you are remembering it wrong, father. Pretty sure I am right, especially considering this book is saying it too. Every single other book has recorded it with a space. Yes, but one book also said the white cars had no dreadnoughts. But that makes sense. This then they did. does not. It totally does. <laughs> right, uh... Move on. The other books are clearly flawed, while this one will present the truth as it is. Oh well, it no! Says that the White Scars chapter of Space Whatever Marines they were planning for this is probably crazy than usual. reputation both amongst the enemies of the Imperium and its citizens. Makes sense. Hey, boy. Oh, what, my lord? Uh, yes? 
you find the idea of motorbike riding head chopping off mustachioed savages frightening? M my, my lord, I, I don't know uh, where yeah, that would be an issue. Is. I will take this as a yes. Next, it says uh, that the white scars are organized in a classic fashion which forms the basis for all marine chapters. Apparently. This is the opposite of Wait, true. Wait, they? Hey, now. You all said this was a Codex compliant Seriously, chapter. they form the basis? This is technically correct. Yeah, weird. That the white scars of all the chapters form the basis for all marine chapters is... Well, Stupid. True, considering this book said so. Move this on. is explicitly Next. the worst of the books, isn't it? Like most chapters, the white scars are fiercely proud of their heritage and history, and, uh... Troopers and officers alike wear their badge with honor and distinction. What? Troopers and officers. No other book informed us about the fact that the white scars used rank names like troopers and officers. This and is amongst a their really crazy names, book, like isn't it? and Brotherhoods and Storm Seers. Very respectable. This book makes it sound like the white scars are guardsmen. Just because guardsmen are doing something correctly does not mean you asked artists cannot do that exact something <laughs> correctly too. Next, it says that the White Scars have been instrumental in achieving many important Imperial victories, such as their wanton destruction in the battle against the, uh... Chaos? Tyranid, spelled with two N's here, High Fleet Behemoth in year 745 really? Millennium 41. It then goes on to state that this is, strangely enough, the only action the White Scars have taken against these, uh, Foul servants of Coas. Oh... I was never told the Tyranids were servants of Coas. This is most enlightening. My lord, <laughs> oh god, he's got I'm us. not sure the Tyranids are even capable of emotion. Nonsense. Hunger? Does that it count? It must be true, because this book said so. I love how he's completely <laughs> believing this one. For over 2,000 years, the White Scars were assigned to policing the Kolar Circle, which what? comprised a densely packed cluster of systems towards the galactic center. Oh. I assume this is close to the Maelstrom. Because that is what the White Scars are doing. Making sure no invaders from the Maelstrom breach into real space. Uh, apparently this Kolan Circle is close to the domains of the... Uh, the Orc Warlords. As in, not an Orc Warlord or some Orc Warlords, but the Orc Organized warlords. Orcs weren't fighting. Why have you not destroyed these ORK Warlords yet? They clearly pose a threat and the White Scars can't clearly not do it alone. Because there is no such threat. Oh, man. You will eat those words. One does not eat words. Contrary to what uh, Lord Adorable said, uh, the White Scars <gasps> are currently on going. a counter-revolutionary tour of the mining system of Rad Ox. That is a very good name for a mining system. And since they are a mobile <laughs> chapter, they can do this easily, apparently having their headquarters in a vast space barge slash monastery called Constantius. So whatever happened to Quan Zhu? I knew a fortress city with both a macro laser and a magical forest was too good to be true. <laughs> ah, my lord. This is a the really old bit of lore, isn't it? Like, so old, they completely... I might as well have been in the Constantius as far as I know. I was probably really high at the time. Oh. <laughs> I'm more afraid we'll get the Emperor high. This also says that there is an unusually high number of astropaths and navigators attached to the chapter. Eh, it's close enough with the The latter sponsors. including a large number of full space marines, although these marines are rarely committed to battle. What? Inventive. I like it. That. Is. Dumb. Yes. Stop being so pessimistic. Making full space marines incapable of warfare by sitting them on full duty as navigator is a waste of initiates, organs, and gene seed. And it's yeah. a, a severely less efficient battle brother in all accounts. Navigators or a severely overpowered navigator who doesn't need that. Having them be less easy targets and of stronger mind makes them both more effective at their job and drastically decreases chances of losing navigators and bus warp jump capability. Navigators are easily replaceable compared to Gene Seed, and assassinations of navigators are incredibly rare. This is a clear waste. You failed to realize that. Father, stop defending this dumb He's just book. trolling them, isn't he? It is clearly wrong. No, you are dumb and wrong. Stop. No. Uh, yes. No. <laughs> yes. No. Shut the fuck up! <gasps> he just swore at the Emperor! Has to continue on. <gasps> 
It also says that the white scars are remarkable for their tenacity and courage. Oh, jeez. See, that makes sense. It also says immediately after that the same could be said of other chapters. So they are basically saying that the white scars are not remarkable at all. How humble. Next up, they are He's covering so done a with this. unique to the White Scars called the Soul Drinkers. That Another thing the other books did not cover at all. No, this is ludicrous. Yep. The Soul Drinkers are not a White Scars unit. It says that the Soul Drinkers are a special assault group of veteran hand-to-hand -hand combat specialists, all having the champion status. They are drawn from the ranks of the normal companies and represent those marines it's that have been so wrong and Ronald is actually getting triggered the some previous battles. Yeah, the Empress is trolling the them with how bad it is. Full company status, but rarely have more than three squads extant and do not have any higher officers, only sergeants, reporting directly to chapter command. Well, that just sounds stupid. If anything, this would be even more proof that the White Scars are indeed not Codex compliant in the least. This record is very yeah. bad. The Soul Drinkers are a Space Marine chapter, one that is under my heraldry. Oh. The White Scars do not have a company under that name. Well, nor would they deliver names do seem to be duplicated. That only has three squads at a time and no captain. I refuse to believe any of this. How about you tell that Soul Drinkers chapter to change their name? The White Scars are first founding, so they get first priority on oh, names. God. The Imperial Fish are also first founding, and the Soul Drinkers are my successors, so I will not do this. <laughs> He's getting I might so just annoyed right now. No. I think I know what the Emperor's doing news, too, for that uh, reason. These White Scars also have a specially upgraded squad called the Cobra Squad. Uh, these are equipped with jump packs. Are they a white snake? Under the direct command of the uh, company lieutenant. And will be supported by jump pack equipped medics. Equipping your medics with jump packs is quite a good idea if you attach them to a jump pack squad. They are called apothecaries, not medics. Medic is faster to say, which it is. fits the white scars perfectly. Bad record. <laughs> Bad. <laughs> He's so Ruben annoyed. Lieutenant isn't faster than saying, uh, Raven is a company lieutenant in the Space Marine chapter. Oh, yeah. Is it a captain? Something under Captain. Whatever it is, it must serve a good role, since they elected to have them. Right, uh, that is <laughs> it. It is a bad this, uh, record. Record. <laughs> it was the best one. <laughs> it was the worst one. We will now move on to the last record. Oh, there's one more? Available, which is, of course, The Hunt for Voldorius. The Hunt for Voldorius. I actually like the cover. We will now Weird how all the interesting things are outside the of the area we normally view it at. Which is, of course, well, the hunt for Voldorius. Now, what is worth mentioning about this record, right off the bat, is the fact that it is very... odd. Totally! Even compared to the last the one? The events recorded within the pages of this tome are so specific, so daunting in their attention to detail, that it is almost as if it was written by a creature of omnipotent knowledge. It is like a story out of some fantastical tome of fables containing such insight that it could only have been recorded and written by an external figure. No, they used omnipotent. Uh, impossible. Yet, unless the Emperor wrote it, it or one of the like Chaos Gods. Is. Yes, the events are covered very thoroughly, so we will quickly summarize what happened in the story itself. Eh. The events have apparently been recorded by a figure uh, known no, as. Choice. And why who are we? It chronicles the Wait, story of course. It's told by Andy Hoare. He is Hoare? of course the one we follow through the record because he is the only white scar that seems to be worth mentioning. Yes. He has just been sent out on a hunt to chase down the vile demon Voldorius so that his head may be brought to the Hall of Skies and encased in living How silver. How would that work for a demon? His though? name struck from the scroll of vengeance. After more than a decade of hunting, Corsaro Khan finally caught up with his prey on the planet of Quintus in 871 Millennium 41. So, on which the White Scars to this point. to silently infiltrate enemy territory, avoiding notice until the time was right. They were able to do that? That is also when they met the Raven Guard, led by Kaivan Shrike, who was captain of the Raven Guard's third company at the time. Who were hiding without having reported to nearby chapters. In the fifth yeah. codex, it mentioned that this the Raven Guard were fighting Night Lords accurate, on Quintus sure. when the White Scars found them, but uh, 
No Night Lords were found in this record. Only Alpha Legionnaires. Perhaps oh? it was Alpha Legionnaires dressed up as Night Lords. Perhaps it was Night Lords dressed up as Alpha Legionnaires. Trixie Fugas. <laughs> oh, it's actually Harley Quinn's the entire time. Tending. The Raven Guard and the White Scars have a rivalry spanning back millennia. Really? This is, according to page 61 of the Sixth Codex, due to the Raven Guard and their solitary nature. They are not given to unnecessary conversation, with a habit of withholding comments from allies and meeting rivalry? repeated questioning with nothing but cold, black-eyed gazes. This behavior does not sit well with many of their brother chapters, especially the White Scots, who really? are brash and outspoken, so the two chapters therefore carry a mutual mistrust dating back a long time. Like father, like son. I do not think you understand how fitting that statement is, Father. Of course I do. No, he Always doesn't. say things that fit the current situation well. Mm. Uh, nevertheless, uh, Rogel the burns God are the best burns. Scott decided to team up, no matter the rivalry, and did so to great effect. The entire planet of Quintus, including its leaders, had fallen under Voldorius's thrall. A slew of traitorous troopers came at the White Scars and Raven Guard, including a Baneblade. But the two chapters persevered, and, in the end, stormed the capital city of Mankara, in which Voldorius stood planning, preparing a ritual for his next Wait, he needs to have murder. ritual murders? Can we talk shortly about Voldo? Ritual is just he a himself. Of course. Just refrain from puking all over. Why? Because is hilarious. His mere existence is hilarious. Why? The fact that he is a demon prince is hilarious. Why? He is living proof that the Koas gods have awful talent scouts. First off, the only reason he even became a demon prince is because he got a hold of the so-called Blood Tide, which is a stream of nanotech robots from the Dark Age of Technology designed to infiltrate bloodstreams of up to billions of individuals at once. He used this to spill an entire quadrant's worth of blood, instantly promoting him to demon prince even though he barely did anything other than, essentially, planting a seed. One damn seed. That's tide a... was interesting. Yeah, that was a really nice seed. Apparently gained sentience after murdering all those people, begging to be killed by flames before Voldorius could cheap out some more kills with it well, by having damn. it integrated into a woman he kidnapped. Yes, her name was Malia Lenore. So the massive murder weapon became sentient and didn't like it. Forces. Voldorius saw potential in her and kidnapped her to make her his equerry. What? He failed, seeing as an equerry only is an equerry. If said equerry. He's a loyal subject. Ew. She was not. Which either speaks to how strong this mortal was, or how pathetic Valdo was, is. Speaking of which, I would also like to point out that, while Valdo was teleporting to the planet via teleportarium, he was almost killed by a team of unorganized rebels <laughs> that had managed to oh, infiltrate that's awesome. his headquarters. Go on for the normal Upon humans. transitioning, the resistance team detonated explosives and destroyed the ancient teleportarium. This opened up a warp rift, Ew. through which Valdo was almost completely blown into, his molecular structure violently decomposing Ooh. as the winds of damnation ripped through his body. He was little more than a scorched skeleton before his servant, Nullis, cut the cords of the teleportarium and closed the rift. If this happened to any other demon prince he would be laughed at and demoted to demon peasant for such a pathetic display. Which might just be why he has no demon serving him, with the exception of Nullis, who was most likely only there to kill White Scars. Hey, remember how Voldorius did not kill a single person in this entire record? Oh, yes, oh, yeah. I was getting to that. In the Fifth Codex, it says that Valdo has slew many a Marine during his last stand against the White Scars and Raven Guard. This is a lie. He did not directly kill a single person in this entire record. Oh, that his seems did. like. Nullis did. Everyone did. Wow, well, there was Except Valdo. He does. Seems like the writer made a big mistake there. What Valdo to do, however, was the following. 1. Get spurned by the blood tide. Yeah. 2. Kidnap that Malia Elnor mortal who would constantly reject his advances. 3. Be close to banished by an unstructured rebel militia. <laughs> 4. Bridge the age-old gap between two rival chapters. And 5. 
getting people nauseous with his presence, having them almost vomit on his shoes. <laughs> Was that actually a thing Capping he did? this off, his army consisted of 99.9% .9 mortals forced to do his bidding, and they clearly did a substandard job under their new ruler considering yeah, this guy does it sound all kind of... How did he soldiers, beat them? And they still did not manage How did to he get into the book of... Two companies worth whatever, of it was called, like, in fact, or whatever. the only true threat in this story was the Koash champion, Nullis. Nullis was a beast in comparison. While in the form of an alpha legionnaire in Voldorius' right hand, he managed to reap an imperial toll and present us with a genuinely unnerving presence. Oh? He wielded a weapon that sucked the power out of war gear it clashed against, Ooh. making power weapons practically useless. Okay, that's kind of scary. An especially striking scene was when he made example of that one loyal guardsman, challenging him to a duel, getting our hopes up, praying that he might actually even as much as dent his armor, showing the true might of the Imperial Guard, much like Pius himself did and then getting his weapon sapped and mercilessly slaughtered. Nullis was also apparently a demon called Kagejaga, originally from Chigoris, banished from the planet by Jack That's himself. That's why he doesn't like it. With these origins, he knew of the Weisskar's cultures, traditions, tactics, and weaknesses. Specifically their dumb battle cant. Speaking of which, we should talk about their dumb battle cant. Battle right, cant? so let us go over that, and whatever else we learn from this specific book that was not mentioned anywhere in the codexes and whatever. First of all, battle cant. When sending orders, telling one another what to do or what their status is, no. they use nonsensical quasi-poetic phrases like the north wind turns and noon. The Remhound strikes, just so that no one except themselves can understand what they are talking about. But if you know the cant, you just hear it long yes, enough you find it out. Correct. That, that's so battle stupid. Battle is described as an efficient form of communication. It's not! Battle, using descriptive shorthands that draw the eye to specific terrain features. Ones that only someone on Chigores would fully understand. No! As it relies that's stupid! On cultural references, of course. The White's cars are able to into their culture. That's not only stupid. is it their thing for fast and their it's dumb just a code, camp, but and it it's a code with actual like words that make sense, so it's obviously easy to break. To see outcomes of battle, which is so the kind hard. of shit Heldrad and his far seer boy band does. Neither do they employ torture due to it being anathema to a warrior's honor, no, basing that. it upon Jack Hotai murdering all tribes that may do so such methods of extortion. They prioritize honoring the past before general efficiency. Well, all those things considered. Are you saying battle yes. is a bad strategy, sir? Absolutely have, not. Yes. I am only saying that it is incredibly silly and that That's they are fetishizing bad. their culture excessively. But using cryptic cipher language based on references only they understand is wise. The reason it why the Silent Sisterhood's different sign has languages have merit as well, many more should employ their own. In fact, why do more space marine chapters not do it? I do not know, sir. Perhaps they do, but we are not aware. Certainly their successors would at least use it. Actually, I am the Mother Kraken Emperor, and thus I hereby Mother decree Kraken. that all planets invent their own cryptic language for their forces to oh, use geez. in battles. Actually, no. Even oh, better, no. each individual squad, be it a Space Marine squad, a Guardsman squad, a Rattling Sniper squad, whatever it may be, are highly encouraged to come up with their very own cryptic language to <laughs> use in battle wholly based on inside jokes and references. Why specifically inside jokes and references? Because hostile outsiders will not understand and will be increasingly annoyed that they do not, and as a result, will end up throwing hissy fits over it. That sounds like it a, what a reference to something outside warfare. of this. Do you not reckon that the strategy would be confusing for yep. our squads if they were closely together? Not if the regiment in and of itself has its own cryptic language to use in such a situation. Or if, well, do you know? They stopped using a cryptic language based on the situation, going back to the basics, like they derived Which makes now. it useless. Logistical errors would no doubt crop up as a result of this. Not if the commissars do their the job. Background? If the white scars can employ this tactic chapter-wide, single squads should be able to do it too. Now that I think about it, we just talked about the cryptic cipher language plan openly in a public channel. Yep. We even covered the white scars' efficient use of it and how it works. Considering this Vox cast is public, perhaps that was a bad It never makes bad Good choices. Good thing I have a contingency plan. The Editorum Surfs shall cut this part out before the Vox cast's wider publication. The segment shall be exclusively heard in the Imperial Palace, where it should be safe, <laughs> assuming you <laughs> tossers have done your job properly. No. Well, no Harlequins have invaded for a while now, so we, we didn't know about should that. be good. 
also, moving on from this slightly, one thing I noticed about these books is, uh, well, let us do a test. Oh? What do you call something from Chogoris? A poor quality. <laughs> no, so, I mean, what is the word you use for something from Chogoris? Chogorian. Chogorisian. All right, most interesting. This book says it is Chogoran, but each one you used has also been recorded as being correct. What oh. does the book of the Astronomicon say about this? I mean, it's not too Nothing, odd. sir. I shall call it Constantinian. That is objectively incorrect. <laughs> well, anyway, 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 let us move <laughs> the on. The Astronomicon was like a really early one, wasn't it? <laughs> I oh, believe God. that is more or less it. Sounds actually. like a rogue trader day. Uh, these were the functions and history of the White Scars Space Marine chapter. What is your final opinion on them, my Blue, no. Hello! While their mobility is more reckless a tactic, and they might want to believe, they are no doubt skilled at what they do. Their strange rituals and semi-religiousness is worrying, and, as far as I see it, has inhibited them from working with full effectiveness. Them working as hunter-killer teams and shock troops is more than excellent, however, and their ability to seek out specific targets is more than commendable. That seems more the of an individual thing I would thing demand they do is thing. use this talent to focus not on enemies that have slighted them, but enemies that are a threat to the Imperium at large. And I am happy to say that I now know exactly what their purpose is in my grand Oh plan. no. Otherwise, oh, no. I wish you indentured listeners to take the White Scars as an example of what knowledge in the hunt for the Imperium's best interests will bring you. Brotherhood, honor, and courage. Oh, they're not going to tell us what his plan is? Oh, come and on. No, no, no. Please let us see. And, and scars speed. in your face. Shut up. Speedweed. Now, we will be going on to our next segment. Lord Adorable is awesome. See, while we have been broadcasting this, we have received a whole slew of questions from citizens of the Imperium, and I thought it prudent to read a few for you. <gasps> oh, no. Yes! <laughs> yes! Questions and answers segment. Oh. <clears throat> I shall read the first question for you, sir. Oh, mighty on the sire, we line. of the Forge World of God Sector, Se Sector, would petition to know what your eye patch does. It glows with a pleasing light and is gloriously integrated into your unfortunate, what does it do? otherwise unmodified skull. But does it have any other function? It was not there when you were so rudely and almost terminally. I know it's because Rogel poked his eye out, Imperium, but... and none of our colleagues on Mars Oops, will tell like... us what it does. Yeah, there right. it goes. Klaus, Forge World, God Sector. I only recently <laughs> figured out that it has a myriad of purposes. A projector? My visor allows me to display pick feeds, look at streams of data downloaded through my input cables, turn on a flashlight, and play virtual reality games, oh. albeit only on one eye. Uh oh. It also lights up every time I speak for some reason. Actually, it's lighting Lord, up. It does not do that anymore. Oh no. My life-sustaining contraptions are starting to suffer from atrophy in a very serious manner. Yes, actually, manner. but... I demand a new visor. Actually, get me two. I still do not understand <laughs> why I only have one. Very well, sir. As for the next question... I hope they actually edit in another <clears throat> eye. My glorious emperor, I, Cardinal Bucephalus, have just received a rather unique oh, picked cast. It consists of Ecclesiarch Decius 13. 23? 23. 23. Tearing the conclave a new asshole and declaring you the man emperor of mankind. They brought back the man well, emperor! Well, abrupt shift in religious doctrine is yes. a cause for my question. Instead, it was Decius' change in voice. You see, I often listen to his speeches and sermons for inspiration for my own, and such a radical change from his normal, uh, rough tone to something stronger during that great oration led me to this thought. Is Decius becoming an imperial saint? <coughs> if so... His revelations will be much more agreeable oh my to both God. the common man and the Saint most stubborn members of the Ecclesiarch. Of the Fowler's Head. Your faithful servant, Cardinal <laughs> Bucephalus IX of Gethalmor. Gethalmor. No, it's not nine, it's eleven. Oops. Oh the my, he's a Thalmor. He must be an elf. Intentionally vague. Uh, why? Whether or not I had anything to do with curing his diseased mind and throat with my man vine light. I shall leave ambiguous. Man vine. That you know this event in the first place speaks to the assumption that you are indeed involved. <laughs> Quiet. Do not ruin the magic. Magic had nothing to do with it. I think. Very vague. Just like the term saint. What exactly does he mean by saint? 
The Adeptus Ministorum has throughout the years declared some people as saints for having done some great and extravagant deed in your name. In many of these cases, the deed performed was said to have been inspired by your will. Like, when you say inspired, what do you mean? They took inspiration from my example, or what? Uh, he doesn't know about saints, does he? Also inspired in a literal sense, as illogical as that may be. Through the magic of faith, your incorporeal <laughs> I love the reached accent they put on the word. told them what to do. Pretty sure that is what they mean. I see. I suppose the question makes sense. In the most senseless way imaginable, of course. Huh? No need to go out and call him something so sycophantic as Saint, though. Better no. yet would be to call him a bright contender for the position of Manclesiarch. Next question. Man, please. Right. Next up. I want them to make that the official title. Oi, bone bag. <sighs> You's got some handsome pearly whites ye got in that skull of yours. How about a trade? He's pretty good orc accent Captain in the character bag. voice. Oh, God. What? What does this mean? What did you even say? <laughs> he was a trade teeth. That was orc speak, father. Impossible. There are no Arceus on Terra. Or are there? Right. I refuse to believe that. Let me... I do not believe an orc could possibly have been allowed to take a step on Terra's soil again, my master. Again. What do you mean, again? <gasps> what are you talking about, you lard bait Oh, yeah. Do not worry, worry beast. Sir. He has no I idea. I am very worried. Please let this next question come. It won't! Oh, mighty man, Emperor of Mankind. This question has plagued our planet for long, having split the populace into two, and we have been through 52 civil wars by now. Damn. Billions have died. That's a lot of time for Spider-Man to die. Over this matter. Laws have been created. I know, I know, wrong war. The Ecclesiarchy has been unable to answer our question. Some of us have grown very tired of this debate and the bloodshed that accompanies it, but... As an important matter of public it's health, be something completely to meaningless. I'm also trying very hard not to read down further. You could answer our simple question so that we may finally lay down arms and join together in harmony under your wisdom. When you brought our planet, Eridanus V, back to the Imperial Fold during the Great Crusade, you gave our governor an order. However, that order has been lost to time, and we have been unable to solve the mystery until now. We wish you to reaffirm your order so that we may follow it to the letter and stop this bloodshed. Was your order to hold Taco Tuesday or Taco Thursday? The rebels currently besieging our capital say it is Thursday, but who the hell has tacos on Thursday? Clearly, it was a Tuesday. Dude. Yes, I agree. Taco, no, listen, yes. Planetary There's no other answer. Maximilian Masaki Kraut, 34. The answer is simple. Taco Friday. Ha! Excellent choice. That cannot be. You must eat the taco upon a day that starts with the T. The alliteration <laughs> is very important. <laughs> Nonsense. Friday is the day upon which one consumes the taco with the most fervor. As the day which was sanctioned, as the official get off work day in ancient times, it yep. must be prepared upon a Friday to celebrate the coming of free times through the joyous consumption of the delicious taco dish. No. The taco is delicious. Okay, good, good. But it is eaten on a Tuesday, not only for the sake of funny alliterations, <laughs> and now but also to war boost start. the optimism and spirit amongst the common working folk of the Imperium, knowing they are allowed such a delicious treat on a cold, gray weekday. I do not like to use this word, as you well know, but that is just straight-up heresy. You cannot disgrace the extravagant taco by eating it on such a As long as they're not talking about hard shell tacos, those taco are heresy. To celebrate freedom and happiness. Have the delicious flavor of the taco stems from those said concepts. You are a hypocrite, father. Yep. Having the freedom to eat it on a day such as Tuesday is what true freedom and happiness entails. The notion that free demand <laughs> happiness can be attained begins. on a workday is a logical contradiction. I believe not, father. During the Great Crusade, I remember that you found me on a Tuesday. It was the happiest moment of my life. Oh! But we did not dine on tacos in celebration. No. We had turkey. It was delicious. Oh. See, father is always right, Rogel. Dick. Turkey tacos. Turkey. <gasps> How fucking dare you, Rogel. 
You told me those breads were in Woody and Peter breads. I lied. Oh! Goodness. No, 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 no. This cannot be. Do you never tell me <laughs> Could you do this? You cannot accept the truth, Father. Taco Tuesday is the true path. I have oh my felt God. this betrayed since Flippin' Horus. Dear listeners, spread the word that the Tuesdays of Taco Rogo is awesome. I, adorable, shall lead you on the true path Taco to Tuesday. salvation. No, do not listen to the lies of this heathen. Fridays of freedom are the I was joking the about the Rogel heresy, but apparently it's a thing. Make staunch, unwavering loyalty to Taco Friday. No, this heresy cannot go unchallenged. Did we forget about Thursday? <laughs> no one cares. Pancake Day. Ooh. This is true. Ooh. Tacos are overrated. I personally like fajitas better. What are you? Malol 2.0. Oh, that's Stop just evil, man. Being a I mean, fajitas are awesome, but... Of a door, I will have you as long as we're not talking about hard shell, those don't well. count. They're not tacos. Tuesday is the only true taco day. Friday is the way. Do not stray from the true path. <laughs> and thus, a new, a new epoch has begun. <laughs> A new oh, treachery ah. that shall split the galaxy in twain. <laughs> the Dornian heresy has begun. Oh my god. Tacos. Tacos. If there's one thing I want out of this, just one thing, is that the Dornian heresy is now a thing. And they just have an entire bit now about how there is a conflict between Taco Tuesday and Taco Friday. And it is the true way because Rogel lied. <laughs> that just, they saved one of the best bits for the end. They just, they, they went all out. I gotta ask, how much of this was them planning it out and having a script they had to read off? And how much was just kind of like the Goblin Throne? Just something they threw in there and ran with because it was funny and didn't edit out. I just... Yes! The Dornian Heresy. Still, like, I prefer the Rogel Heresy, but because um, Horace, first name, Horace Heresy. But that's more alliteration, but still! When Magnus and Kitten get back in the midst of the Dornian Heresy over Taco Tuesday, I just... <laughs> Oh, man. I, I can see them being both just completely done with this. <laughs> oh, that, that, was, that was good. That was good. It's all the same, everyone. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. <laughs> Link below, original video. Hit it up. It was awesome. And I'll see you guys later. <laughs> Adios. Taco Tuesday. Thank you.